I'm Keith Thibault from FRC Media. FRC Media is working hard to make sure that the voters of Fall River are educated as we head to the March 12th special recall election. Part of our effort is to speak with the candidates running for mayor in that election. I'm pleased to be joined by one of them right now, School Committeeman Paul Coogan. Paul, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Now, now, Paul, a lot of people may know of you. You've been a school committee man now. This is your second term, of course, many years working in administration for the Fall River uh, School Department. With that background, what was your deciding factor in running for mayor? Um, I, my deciding factor in running for mayor was the direction the city was taken and, uh, and the way people intera uh, interact with each other um, throughout the city. I mean, you look at what's going on uh, in government center, aside from the uh, criminal complaints, mm -hmm. just the interactions and the, the relationship building that's so important to keep a city on an even keel. I didn't, I didn't see that happening. Um, a lot of my friends approached me and said, would you be interested in doing this? I said, absolutely. I, I uh, had actually thought about it last time, but I wanted to see how it played out. And again, uh, I may as a, a young man and I wanted to see if things change, but I didn't see, I don't like the direction the city's going. I think we can do a better job. Obviously, there's two aspects to the ballot. The first part of the ballot on March uh, 12th is asking the residents whether they wish to recall Mayor Correa. Mm -hmm. And I'm making the assumption that because you're running for mayor that you plan on voting yes on the first part of the ballot. <laughs> Why should the mayor be recalled? Well, the mayor, the mayor should be recalled because he's in a, a significant amount of legal problems. He's not, you know, the other day I was listening to one of the uh, interviews on, on the radio station. He said it's a private business man matter. Uh, tax fraud is not a private business matter. Uh, when I was a young man, um, there was another politician that had one count federal thing. He went to jail for 18 months. Um, he's being charged as a criminal. He's not being charged, you know, a civil, if it was a civil case um, between Keith and I, and Keith was making coats, and I didn't like 10 of them, and I went to court and I said, these buttons are wrong, and I, uh, I wanted re redress or a, a different uh, action, I'd say, the judge would say, okay, those buttons are wrong, or no, those buttons are fine, let them right. go. But if I steal 200 coats off you, that's a criminal matter, and I believe that's what, that's what we're talking about here. The mayor's got himself into a significant problem for activity that was done, some of it while he was a city councilor. Uh, the other cry he always makes is it didn't happen while I was mayor, but you were a city councilor when you were taking these funds in and dispersing them. Um, it's my position that that's just a horrible stain on the city, and um, I had wished I wished he had just resigned and uh, we had an interim mayor and there was more time to get to it. But this recall election came up because a group of citizens said we have to we have to remove the mayor because of his activities, and I, I decided it was time for me to go. I've been very, very fortunate in Fall River. People have consistently put me at the top of the ballot, and um, and I think uh, I think if given the opportunity to serve um, after March 12th, I think people will notice a radical change in the way government functions in Fall River. Now, obviously, in your role as school committee man and also in your years with the school department, you've had a lot of interaction with, with city residents. And even since you announced your campaign in, in, in early January, you've been meeting with residents. What have you heard from residents inside Fall River and maybe some colleagues you may deal with outside of Fall River about the perception of the city during this whole incident with the mayor and what's happening with the recall? Well, to put it bluntly, we're the laughing stock. I mean, uh, we we're right down the street from here, we were building a, uh, a $260 million brand new high school. Tremendous, tremendous state involvement between Charlie Baker and his administration, the MSBA. Everybody's pitching in so that the kids in Fall River have a school worthy of them, that they can get a good education in. Um, no one would come, no one, no one would come, no lieutenant governor, no treasurer, no, uh, no governor, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate. And uh, the other day again, I, I hate to harken back to his interview on the F SAR, he said, oh, I have a good working relationship with the state. Well, that's, that's just not, from what I hear, that's not accurate. They're not, they're not interested in, in talking to our uh, mayor until he gets his legal problems straightened out. Um, he had at one point endorsed Charlie Baker, and now we're at the point where Charlie Baker's asking him to leave. I don't believe that if um, there was a problem between myself and someone else that was telling me to leave a place, leave a place, that I'd have a good working relationship with them. And I mean, the congressmen and other elected officials have called for the same thing. 
And truly, Ame is younger than some of the students I dealt with. If one of my students came to me in that situation, I would, have, I would tell them to resign, straighten your life out, and if everything you're saying is not true, you'll come back stronger. Mm -hmm. But it's my position that he's, uh, he's in a big, big can of uh, worms right now that he's got to work his way out of. All right, let's talk about some of the issues in the campaign because Good. if the first part is successful, then obviously you need to share with the community what you would do um, as mayor. Um, as we tape this, literally about a week or two uh, ago, less than a week actually ago, uh, the mayor announced the elimination of pay as you throw. The mayor voided the contract with waste zero, meaning no more purple bags. In effect, the, uh, the program is, is over. Uh, what were your thoughts about that move? And I guess generally, what's your thoughts about pay as you throw and recycling and trash in Fall River? Okay. I have to say this, Keith, because uh, the Facebook warriors have been hitting on me since this came out. I released a statement right away. If you looked at my statement, uh, you looked at it, it was addressing process. Um, purple bags are gone. I'm not bringing them back. Let's leave that there. My concern with trash is we, I will say it, jumped on me for saying this, we're going to pay for trash one way or the other. How we pay for it as a city is what's going to happen going forward. We have, we have a significant number of issues that I wish the mayor had addressed at his uh, press conference. It was, if he had got up and given out a fact sheet to people, how many tons of trash, how many tons of recycling, what's our contract look like with easy disposal? What are we going to do with the 4,000 people that are on private trash pickup now and are coming back into the system? How does that increase the tonnage? Are we buying those people the, uh, the plastic totes? What's the cost of that? And where's the money coming from? Um, I have consistently said that what he's done is cut the budget halfway through the year, taken out an additional million dollars. I've heard that he said that money was set aside and it wasn't being used. Nonetheless, that's money we can't plan for going forward, mm -hmm. and where are you looking to make up that money? Um, hopefully, those plans are uh, going to be spelled out coming forward, and that gives whoever uh, b becomes mayor a clearer understanding of what's going on. Right now, I believe those questions have not been addressed. Are we, how much are we paying waste management, our bag company, for breaking the contract? I mean, those things should have been on that addressed in that press conference, and that was my concern. More about process. If the mayor had the authority to get rid of that contract, I have no idea why it wasn't done when he got reelected. During the campaign, he said, I'm getting rid of the purple bags, I'm getting rid of the purple bags. His contention was now the city is financially fit to do it. Mm. Fine, then why were you saying it? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you say, if the city's financially fit, I'll get rid of the bags? He didn't. He made another one of those statements where you sometimes make a mistake. I'm getting rid of the bags. He waited two years, uh, and right before recall election, mysteriously, the city became financially fit, and he got rid of the bags. Mm -hmm. It's my position he should have given out a lot more information to the voters and the citizens and the city council, and then we'd have seen where we ended up. I, I think that's what he should be doing now, is putting out a fact sheet on this so that everybody spelled out where we're going, and okay. that's clear. So, so to be clear, if you are mayor, you will not bring back the purple bag program or a pay-as-you-throw program? Well, the, the problem is we're going to pay. Right. It's going to come out of the taxes, a fee, a combination, somehow. The best thing that we can do as a city is, at this time, I would say we leave it in the taxes, but as fees go up on trash and the tonnage costs increase, 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 we're going to have to make some adjustments. I mean, leaving it in the taxes, uh, I was looking at someone's tax bill since 2015, their house taxes have gone up $670. Mm. It's a significant jump, and that may be where he's, uh, he's getting his money from. Mm -hmm. uh, just a simple uh, single-family home, um, the taxes went up 182, 177, 287 for a total jump since t uh, 2016 in the last four years, $640 of increased revenue into the city. So again, uh, if the mayor had spelled out we have enough with the increase in taxes to cover it, that would have been a fine plan for me. But lay it out, you know, in writing, especially at a press conference. If he's calling you guys down there, give everybody a sheet so that Keith can look at the sheet and say, what about this? Right. It, gives you, it gives you a little basis of where to go. That's, that was my contention. The bags are gone. Whatever we do going forward, I hope, is in the best interest of the city. All right. We talked a little bit about finance. Let me dovetail into that. 
Um, obviously, you know, one of the mayor's um, projections when he talked about the end of pay as you throw was that the city is a better financial financial situation. That uh, the reserve fund is is a, is at a healthy healthy point. Um, as mayor, again, not looking at you know current finances because you don't have that ability right now to look at that. But how do you see yourselves in terms of um, either lessening the burden on taxpayers in Fall River or making sure that any tax increases, fee increases, adjustments uh, are in line with your goals to make sure that people get the services they deserve? Right. Um, <clears throat> taxes are a necessity for the society to function. Um, what we have to do is look for two, two combinations. How do we reduce costs and how do we increase um, taxes, tax revenue to the city? Um, we have a bunch of ne necessities, public safety, education, mm -hmm. all those things have to be taken care of. But where can we look at cost savings? Um, I think um, every year, I think the mayor goes up two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, which is the cap, and mm -hmm. that's where we can go up. Um, I would like to not go up two and a half every year. I'd like to find a way to try to. That's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I thought I'd turn that down. I would like to not go up two and a half every year. I'd like to find a way to try to lessen the burden on the homeowners a little bit through some cuts and combinations. Um, it's, if, if that was possible, um, then the burden would be less on the homeowners. Again, if we, can, if we can keep the bags and those other fees out, the other $120 fee, that's fine with me. But there are ways to try to get some extra revenue in. I was just talking to um, one of the fire people about ways to, to look for revenue in um, in other areas of the city, I, I look at like firemen. Uh, some some towns, believe it or not, around the country have ways of charging uh, insurance companies mm -hmm. when they fight a fire. Uh, they they were telling me how they had that uh, when that tractor trailer truck flipped over on that exit behind Conley, right. they were able to recoup their cost from that truck. I think we have to look for stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of ways we can look for money that doesn't put the burden directly on the homeowners, but obviously real estate taxes are going to make up a chunk of money for all of us all right let me ask you um, a little bit you mentioned fire department let's delve into some public uh, safety uh, questions uh, just so people know um, uh, Paul has information on his website electpaulcoogan.com is that correct, correct? correct. Uh, where you can read his platform and uh, find out more information about uh, where Paul stands in terms of the issues in terms of public safety, let me ask you, Paul, um, how do you feel the current staffing levels are in terms of police and fire in Fall River? Would you look to make any changes to that, and how would you go about doing that in terms of finding, again, the revenue to pay right. for that? I believe that the, the additional staff into those departments is already in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, what I would look to do is to make the people that are in the job now whole. Those are the people I want to talk about, the people that are already doing the public safety job, um, the firemen and the policemen. Um, if you look at the last contract for the policemen, um, they received zero, zero, 002. Now it's my contention that if the money was not necessary for the bags and we are able to m fold that back into the taxes, which again is fine, then there should be money to look for a, a way to give our uh, policemen 1%, 2%, half a percent, something. But giving them zeros is extremely disrespectful. Uh, they explained to me that the, uh, the mayor had never attended a negotiation session, and I don't, I'm not saying I'm gonna sit down there and uh, hammer out all these differences with them, but I d do plan on attending things like that. I want people to know that whether we're on one side or the other, we'll work together. Public safety, I looked at a few things that I would like to see us do that are very basic, not very, uh, not very costly. I'd like to see, I walk into BCC and you have those emergency call boxes uh, over the campus. Some of our bigger parks, I'd like to see a few of those if possible and we'll get the ones on the rail trail going. Um, I'd like to see a way to streamline some of our police reporting if possible. I talked briefly with the chief about that because I would love to see a way to get men back on the streets instead of sitting at a keyboard trying mm -hmm. to make sure their report is accurate. Um, and I'd also like to see cameras going in our high crime areas. I think that that's something that's probably pretty cost effective and would make the citizens feel safer. And then um, public safety and housing will kind of almost melt together. Sure. I want to find out who's living in our 
housing developments. The Forever Housing Authority has thousands of units, and I want to know who's in there, where are they from, and what are they doing. And I think if you look at those things, we can start to make the city a safer place. And we, we honor the people that work in public safety, whether it's firemen, policemen, EMTs, dispatchers, whatever. We honor those people for their service to the community. As I said in one of my other speeches, I say public safety is important. I've believed in it my whole life, and I believe that public service goes right along with that. Now, what about in terms of uh, police and fire equipment and facilities, right. in terms of the upkeep and maintenance of that? You do mention that in your, right. in your platform. And I, I've looked at the, at the fire department, and there, there, was, there was like one truck that wasn't up to standard that they're going to look to replace shortly. They're, they, it's in the pipeline. There's one truck. They have, they have a lot of new trucks. Um, and, the f and the fire trucks, I mean, and the police tr cars, I'm sorry, should be tra changed regularly, too. Um, I think that if we get s some money in these set-aside accounts so that we're regularly looping through six, eight cars a year, we can keep these fleets up to standard. Right now, those cars are used 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they're getting beat up a little bit. Um, we want guys in safe cars. Um, protecting us and making sure they're able to get out and about in the community. So I would look for some way to set up one of these funds, uh, that whether it's c community development money, that these cars and these uh, fire trucks are changed regularly. I don't think now they're all, um, they've all been changed in the fire department, but uh, what's the plan going forward? They're going to have to be changed again. Are we putting money aside now mm -hmm. so that in 10 years when we start swapping them out again, it's a normal course of business, not oh, we need money now for that and this. Right. The opioid crisis, of course, very um, uh, much a problem here in Fall River and across the country. And it's not just a Fall River issue, obviously. Um, you mentioned in your, in your um, platform that you'd like to um, get more involved, particularly with education and prevention mm -hmm. issues. But really, uh, Paul, what can, a, what can a mayor do? I mean, other than directing public safety police to try to get the, the <laughs> drugs off the street, what, what can a mayor do? Well, um, you look at what happened with the opioid um, crisis nationally, and it exploded onto everybody. But locally in Fall River, we hired a gentleman that didn't work out mm -hmm. at all. He ended up, you know, renting a Tahoe or an Escalade, whatever he did down in New York, and spending the money on inappropriate things, and he ended up losing his job. What a mayor can do is set the tone for the actions to... Um, going forward on the opioid crisis. There are a number of groups in Fall River that are all working to fight this battle. I think the best way to do that, I don't believe we need a paid position. I've talked to a few people and they're like, you don't need to hire an opioid czar or anyone like that. You need to take advantage of what's in place. We have STAR, we have Stepping Stone, we have programs in place now that if people could come together, um, there's River to Recovery, there's, there's organizations that that have been fighting this, that if you take representatives from all of them, and let's say, for example, they meet once or twice a month, they can report to the mayor about what their needs are and what we need to do to address this going forward. There, right now, there are people all over Fall River doing God's work to fight this battle. Um, they go out, uh, what, one, two days after someone's OD mm. to check on yeah. the family and make sure that the young man or the young ladies, you know, doing better. But there are things going on right now all across Fall River. They just have to be coordinated. They have to have to come through a central group that can report to the mayor. Um, they, they were t there's a statistic out there. Um, less than 2% of all the money that goes into this opioid crisis is spent on prevention and health care. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, health care education. Uh, for some reason, the programs in the schools in Fall River were stopped. I will definitely reinstitute that at a, as young an age as we need to go. I don't care if it's down to K or 1. I want people to understand the dangers of this drug, what they may be seeing in their homes, and how to address it. Are you in favor of the uh, STAR facility being uh, uh, built in, in the North End, more beds? I'm in favor of the STAR facility being be built in the North End if it's going to go to Fall River residents. Right. I don't believe that's even possible, but I don't think, I think Fall River has done its share on this. Uh, we have more. F we have almost as many facilities right now as Boston. Uh, we we take people every day. If you see the cars coming to um, to Stepping Stone or Star, they're coming from Suffolk County. They're coming from Plymouth County, and they're bringing people here to get help. And that's 
that's God's way and we should do whatever we can to help, but we've done our share. Mm -hmm. Star can locate in one of the surrounding communities, that's fine with me. Uh, if they're gonna if they're gonna designate those beds or exp what if they expand the place where they are now? Mm -hmm. Let's look at that. If they decide to do something like that, that might be a way to go to get additional beds for them. But right now, I'm not for that one unless it's going to be all for Fall River people. Then I'll go. I'll support them. But if they're going to bring people here from Framingham or Methuen, uh, I'm not in favor. I think we should take care of our own. Okay. Um, City of Fall River continues to lag behind in terms of employment. Uh, our unemployment rate still is one of the highest unemployment rates in the uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, how do you plan to spur economic development to try to create create good paying jobs for the workforce that we have here in Fall River? Um, many of them um, may not be as as uh, highly educated as, as others. That's the, the the workforce that we have. So how do you how do you propose on on improving economic development and jobs? Well, there, there are two plans floating around out there right now, Keith. There's the um, downtown urban renewal plan and there's a waterfront renewal plan. I will try to get those pushed up to get them instituted within the first 30, 45 days of me taking office. Uh, I think I said 30 on my position, so I'll mm -hmm. stay with that. But uh, those would be a start. Mm -hmm. I think uh, economic development, for some reason, turned into a personal turf war uh, to the detriment of the whole city. I think. Uh, what happened there, again, if the mayor decided that FROAD was not the way to go, he did not want them in the government center on the sixth floor. He thought he had a better plan. Then bring the plan forward and give people 30 days to transition out. I think what happened there was you're gone, we're done. No one's filled the gap. It was, it was given to this person, it was given to that person. I think there should have been a plan in place very similar to the press conference we talked about that saying what his plan was going forward. He kind of left it in the lurch and economic development went to hell in the handbasket. He, there are people in this city that have far more experience than Paul Coogan in doing economic development and I will be picking their brains and working with them to see what we can get going. I mean people in Florida have done some great things. We have Amazon, we have South Coast Marketplace, we have um, Blount Seafood, these, these, these companies all didn't come from out of the air. Someone did the work, someone did the paperwork, someone got the funding, and, st and those are the someones I want to talk to that can get the city moving again. So would you be interested um, in the Coogan administration to look at resurfacing some sort of an agreement with, with now Bristol County Economic Development Consultants, FROED, would that be a possibility? Well, I, I think that, they, again, with proper vet, with proper vetting, and if we sit down, I would not be putting Froed back in government center. I think that 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 model wasn't w was past time. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that the, the people that I talk to that w that are members of their board are very very big investors in the city of Fall River. Uh, I met with a few of them the other night. They want Fall River to succeed, and those are the people I'm looking for. People that want to put Fall River first and go forward. Whatever the model ends up being. It'll be something that can help the citizens in the city. And that's what we need, good paying jobs, and we need people that want to care about their town. And I think that that can go. There are plenty of people in Fall River that know how economic development goes, and I believe we call on them. What's your thoughts on um, instituting TIFs to try to lure companies to create jobs here in Fall River? No, that, that's, that's like a nationwide thing. I, mm -hmm. People do that. I mean, I remember when I was few years ago, I remember seeing what Mercedes-Benz got from South Carolina to go there when they located free land, free training of every employee. So those are the same kind of things. They give uh, a company a break to locate there. The swap off is jobs, how long the commitment is, what are you going to give to the community, you know, mm. uh, even after the TIF. And, and, and then you play it out by the numbers to see what Fall River gets, and then it, you decide if it's worthwhile. But I'm not against incentivizing companies to come to Fall River. I think anything we can do to get ourselves back in the game is the way to go. Obviously, you've spent a lot of time in the school department. You're a current mm -hmm. school committee man. Um, how do you view, view the status of our schools um, in terms of not only uh, funding, but programming and the quality of our education? And how, as mayor, would you look to improve upon that? Um, if you look at the schools in Fall River right now, and with the advent of the uh, new Durfee, Physically, we're in a very good spot. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of beautiful buildings. I mean, like I said, I was in Fonseca yesterday. The building's 11 years old, and it's still in great shape. A little paint here and there would look, make it look a little better, but it's in good shape. 
I think the schools, if you walk around the classroom with me, Keith, and if you ever want to go, you let me know. But if you walk around the classrooms, you see engaged kids, hardworking teachers, and things are happening in the schools in Fall River. The only lag point we have, or actually two of them that kind of always hang up on me, uh, attendance and the scores. Mm -hmm. Those are, the, those, I think our teacher retention's up. I think, uh, I think we have some great principals working, and I think our staffing, we're doing a, a lot better, but scores and attendance. I mean, they, we looked at it the other day. This just shows you what it's like in attendance. We did, uh, I went to Fonseca. The day it was 60, 96% attendance. Mm -hmm. Last week, when it was freezing, 84. Mm -hmm. So you're talking a 12-point swing attributable to weather. Mm -hmm. So as we come through the winter, it's like the people on the school committee and in the ad building are saying, what's the temperature outside? Where are we going? Right. I mean, it's, it's that much of a swing, and now the state penalizes you for attendance. Yeah. Just one other thing I want to bring up, because we're getting close on time, is um, the unfortunate incident um, earlier this year of the, the passing of the student at the Fonseca School and now there's discussions with the school department with, with Diamond and other schools in our city about bullying and suicide mm -hmm. prevention. Um, how do you think a, a mayor or a school department can foster that discussion and how important, not only for this issue, but in general, is to continue to engage parents Correct. in their education? That, that is obviously another area that you brought up, Keith, that uh, we have to get more parents engaged in education. But talking specifically to bullying, I went to that workshop a yeah. bit uh, up at Diamond, and it was a great cross-section of community people. Uh, that unfortunate situation with the family, those people were friends of mine. I had those, those relatives, I had those kids in school, uh, some of the relatives, mm -hmm. and I, so that was like a kick in the backside to me. I really felt for them, and I, when I went to the wake, uh, that was a tough one. But um, those issues, the bullying was never attributed to this incident in any way, shape, okay. or form. But Bullying as a societal problem goes on all the time. The workshop at Diamond went forward with a, um, a commitment to keep the group together, bring in the professionals that are necessary to find better ways to tackle it. And uh, obviously in the schools, I believe we do a good job tackling it, but it does go, it goes on everywhere. And the cyberbullying on the, on the Facebook and all those other sites is brutal for these kids. We didn't grow up like that. Um, mm. The bully would be the guy that pushed you on your way home from school, and now they, they type, and uh, it turns into a real bad thing. But th the school is has dove in headfirst on this, and there's going to be some uh, very good things coming out of this. We've been already slugging it out. We have a bullying coordinator for the district. It's her job to follow up on all bullying investigations, contact parents, contact the student. So we, we've been doing that for years. Now we're going to take it a level further and try to engage the community when there's an issue to follow up the whole way through. In terms of parental involvement, that's always been important, correct? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we, we do things like that throughout the school system to get parents engaged. We have a parent engagement center. We have uh, our parent teachers nights consistently trying to get parents in. Students that have their parents engaged in education are successful students mm -hmm. and we need to keep them involved. And, uh, I can't tell you how important it is to visit your sons and daughters' schools and make sure you stay in, in touch with them. Finally, before we leave, how can people find out more information about your campaign? Okay. Uh, we're very, very active on Facebook. If you go to Facebook, Paul Coogan, just type it in and you'll see where we are. Um, we also have a website, www.electpaulcoogan.com. Uh, we're out all the time. People know where I am. There's no problems. If you want to talk to me, send me a message. We'll go from there. But uh, we're doing the best we can to win this thing on March 12th, and I can sure use your vote and your help. And if you consider me, I'd really appreciate it. Paul, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Good thank luck to you. Thank we'll you. We'll talk Keith. soon. Like thank you for joining us, and please make a point to vote on the recall election day, Tuesday, March 12th.